From the relieffactor.com studios, here's Mike Gallagher. 22 Senate Republicans, 22 of them, uh, they sided with the Democrats in funneling aid to Ukraine. And um, I'm going to read to the list of the 22 Republicans so you know who they are. McConnell, Thune, Boozman, Capito, Cassidy, Collins, Cornyn, Kramer, Crapo, Ernst, Grassley, Hoven, Kennedy, Moran, Murkowski, Risch, Romney, Rounds, Sullivan, Tillis, Wicker, and Young. Those are the 22 Senate Republicans who passed the Ukraine aid bill. He would also thankfully send some aid to Israel. He will also send aid to our Pacific Island allies. But the framework of the bill comes from the failed attempt at including border security. And there is no border security, our border security aid in this package. It's just border security for Ukraine. And it's only, incidentally, here's how it breaks down. Israel is in the middle of a war. Israel and the United States are close, important allies. $60 billion for Ukraine. You know how much for Israel? $14 billion for Israel, including $9 billion for aid to Palestinians in Gaza. $4.8 billion to support allies in the Indo-Pacific. My gosh. My gosh. What is the end game with Ukraine? Can somebody tell me once and for all? You know, I know we have people who listen and watch this show, and you you love Ukraine, and you appreciate the noble effort to help them. You have, I still see the, the yellow and blue flags in people's yards uh, in my neighborhood in Florida. They're the same yard signs that also have Biden-Harris as well, interestingly enough. But okay, you, you support Ukraine. What's Ukraine going to do? Beat Russia? What's the end game? That's what J.D. Vance asked last night with Laura Ingram on Fox News Channel. Uh, Laura, look, of course, we understand the issues. We've been sitting in the same briefings, but the people who have sit, sat in those briefings for decades, Laura, have gotten us into war after war after war without serving America's interests. I, I find it shocking that somebody could actually rely on the experts after the last few years of what we've been dealing with from COVID to the war in Ukraine to say, well, we've just got to listen to the smart people, Laura. It's totally detached from reality. There is nothing that will be served by sending another $61 billion to Ukraine. There's no path to victory. There's no end in sight. And there's nothing that we can do with another $61 billion except throw more fuel on the fire of inflation and America's debt. What did he say that you could disagree with right there? What did he say? What's the end game? What's the goal here in billions and billions other than the endless war machine the industrial military complex and all the neocons and all the people who love these wars in foreign countries are real happy with, but not one dime for our border. It's the uniparty. It's the absolute uniparty pushing for this endless aid to Ukraine. Israel is a far different story. They need us. $14 billion to Israel? But $60 billion to Ukraine? You've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. I mean, I'm sorry. It's sickening to me. And I am wondering how you feel about this package aided by 22 Senate Republicans. And incidentally, it faces a very uncertain fate in the House. Speaker Mike Johnson said that the package lacking border security leaves it silent on the most pressing issue facing our country. Bingo. That's why Mike Gallagher got it wrong in voting against impeaching Mayorkas. And now he's out of a job, evidently. He's throwing in the towel. 
and pretending that it was always in the cards. That story is bizarro. Him going around saying, oh, yeah, my family and I, we just decided it was time to throw. What? As if it had nothing to do with your despicable vote against impeaching Mayorkas? Who are you kidding? What, are you intimidated by Marjorie Taylor Greene? Who yelled at you on the House floor last week? I mean, this guy's a, a a brave guy. He's a U.S. Marine, and the and the and the the kitchen heat got too hot for him. Wow, didn't see that coming, did you? And I sure didn't see it coming that he was going to pretend that his resignation from Congress has nothing to do with his vote against Mayorkas and his vote against holding the Biden administration accountable for the border. So let's dive into this, please, and let me get your response. Let me get your opinion of 22 Republicans, and I named all of them for you just now, believing that Ukraine gets $60 billion, but our border gets nothing. Border security, Zippo, not our border security, but let's make sure we assist Ukraine's border security. What's the end game? If you're in favor of endless uh, cash to Ukraine that you and I are paying for, what do you think? You what's you, what do you think? How, how's this going to end up? Ukraine's going to defeat Vladimir Putin and the Russian army? You've you've got to be kidding me. 